they might be surprised at just how human science and scientists often can be. The Martian Investigators. Two spacecraft are about to fly by the planet Mars, returning scientific information and close-up pictures such as no Earth man has ever seen. The first man to see the pictures of Mars will be Dr. Robert Layton, head of a team managing television cameras aboard the Mariner 6 and Mariner 7 spacecraft. His associate is Dr. Bruce Murray. Optimistic, inquisitive, daring to reach and sometimes to overreach, these men share not only science, but also a saving humanity and humor. Well, last supper. <laughs> the last supper before the Mariner 6 spacecraft begins its flyby of the planet. This is Monday, July 31st. The two spacecraft were launched in February and March. Now Mariner 6 is about to begin taking its first pictures of the surface. These scientists many of whom have spent years trying to study Mars through the shimmering atmosphere of Earth, will soon be seeing the first far encounter pictures of the whole planet, then later, close-ups of its surface. Another Martian investigator is Dr. George Pimentel of the University of California at Berkeley. His instrument, the infrared spectrometer, will search just above the Martian surface for water vapor and evidence of organic compounds that could indicate the possibility of life on Mars. Now Mariner 6 is beginning that search as the spacecraft enters its far encounter phase and receives a critical ground command to turn on power for the scientists' instruments. Send DC-25 at 01-16-23. We'll know more about encounter than we did since we started this business four and a half months ago. For each of the 20 scientists conducting the six major experiments aboard the Mariners, the flyby of Mars will be an exciting experience. This film will look at just two of these experiments through their chief scientists, Leighton and Murray on the picture experiment, Pimentel on measurement of Mars' lower atmosphere. Mars' fascination lies in certain similarities to Earth. It has a 24-hour day light and dark areas that change color with four seasons and polar caps. Four years ago, pictures from the Mariner 4 spacecraft showed craters and answered some questions about Mars, but many more remain. Are the polar caps water ice, which could support life? Or carbon dioxide, dry ice, which could not? Does the atmosphere contain Earth-like proportions of oxygen and nitrogen? Is the surface shielded from deadly solar radiation? What makes the shifting light and dark areas? And what do they look like close up? Now the instruments of Mariner 6 are beginning to encounter Mars, and the data containing their information and pictures are cascading to Earth through the intricate system by which engineers of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory have been directing and controlling the two spacecraft. Nineteen hours after taking its first far encounter pictures, Mariner 6 is ready to play them back. Dr. Robert Layton is about to see the first images. We get from that or this general resolution. I see the picture developing here. So here is our first view of Mars since Mariner 4. It's on. By spacecraft. By spacecraft. Yeah, I see some uh, interesting light areas near the upper limb. Switch to speed. There are some bright areas near the uh, afternoon limb, the upper limb of the planet, uh, as you see them on the screen there. It's the bright feature that you were talking about is still just right at the limb. Right. The edge on is rather. That's rather clearly a cloud because so that uh, is a cloud. It's uh, up at the top, right uh, top of the view. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that that's an afternoon cloud rather than a morning cloud. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair that's, evening on Mars. That's in mid-afternoon. For men who have been studying Mars most of their lives, 
the distant pictures are already a revelation. So many things are showing up. I think the boys over here are finding fantastic agreement between features seen on the far encounter pictures and features seen from Earth, but not the nature of which were known yet. One particular marking on Mars called Nix Olympica, for reasons I don't know, uh, which has been mapped for years, is a little, not a little, it's a 500 kilometer diameter crater, a circular marking with a light uh, boundary, light ring on the thing. And there it is, right in the, standing out on that far encounter picture. That may move. As the spacecraft hurtles toward the planet, the investigators study the far encounter pictures to decide how they would like their instruments aimed for the near encounter pass. The best aim for pictures is not the best aim for Dr. George Pimentel's IRS. He would like his instrument to scan a uniformly light area south of the track the picture team would prefer. So that it, an interesting region came right in the region of overlap, and they lost that overlap. They want to push the whole thing north. And there you go. And we're not going to Mariner 6 is rapidly nearing its closest approach to Mars. The scientists have to decide whether to aim for the best pictures or the best data. Dr. Bruce Murray leads the argument for the picture team. The value judgment in this, and also for 7, is what indeed you see in the dark side. As you point out, none of you have seen it. You don't know. So this could be, you don't know, what's the upper area probability. That could be the most exciting thing of all. If there's an elevation yeah, but difference. this could be the most exciting, and that's the yeah. place where we'll get the best information on both points. But how about in seven? No. I think you failed to no. appreciate no. the point no. I was trying that. to make, is that the, you're costing us eight pictures on the bright side of seven. Oh, come on. But just a minute. Let's, 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 come on. Hear me out. Let's let's worry about 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 just a minute. Hear me out. Hear me out, please. Because the argument is canonically the same kind of argument. You don't know what you're going to see. Bob is unimpressed with what you're going to see there. I look, am too. I was unimpressed with what okay, we saw last minute. night. Just but I think you had to look. Just a minute. Let me I finish. think the issue that now is open is whether you should look again. Yeah, just because minute. you know it's just an encounter. You don't see it. But you're going to want to look again. May I you? finish, please? My point. <laughs> Do we have not much time. But make a proposal. Oh, no. Murray breaks the stalemate. He agrees to Pimentel's request for Mariner 6. In exchange, Murray and the picture team will have the right to aim Mariner 7. Two degrees south, three degrees south, one picture longer. Right. Let me say quickly, uh, drawing. These are good. As Mariner 6 nears the planet, the second spacecraft, Mariner 7, suddenly stops transmitting. One by one, each station on the world tracking network reports no contact to project manager Bud Shermeyer. Stand by and, and uh, keep looking. And 11, if you see a signal, uh, call it out, and we'll see uh, see what we can do. I don't want to discourage you, but they may not see it because of uh, degraded noise temperature. Well, you know what the problem is? Just an unscramble the data. Any indication so far of anything happening before the planet? Okay. The silence of Mariner 7 could be explained by collision with a meteorite or explosion of a gas bottle in George Pimentel's experiment. But right now, Mariner 6 is flying by Mars. Pimentel is learning that his IRS on 6 has failed to operate properly, casting further suspicion on his experiment as the cause for the failure of 7. Station 11 in Goldstone, California has picked up a weak signal from the missing Mariner 7. But the radio signal alone cannot report the operating condition of 7. There's no telemetry. It's a signal seems to be steady. It doesn't look like it's rolling around in the sky, or at least not tumbling around in the sky. It could be rolling. Without data, we're kind of a little bit blind. Now completing its flyby, Mariner 6 is playing back pictures taken only 2,100 miles from the surface of Mars. At last, Robert Layton will be seeing close-ups of the planet's face. Take a look at what's coming in now.